So yesterday my daughter asked me that why does somebody choose to be a beggar? I said to my daughter, well, it's not a choice that they made today. It's a choice that they've made years ago, long ago. You see, my friends, it's very important that we understand that in life, there are going to be questions that comes up to us as parents where we don't really know exactly what's the perfect answer. But as for me personally, I always try to use questions like these to infiltrate something positive in the minds of my kids. And this question come at a point where I didn't know exactly what should I say or how should I answer this question, but I have to give an answer. And I thought about it for a while and then I said, you know what? I'm going to give you an example why this person might be on the streets begging. It's definitely not something that this person woke up one day and said, I'm going to be a beggar. It's a choice the person has made long, long ago. Say, for instance, I send you to school tomorrow and I want you to go to school to get a good education. Yeah. And you decide not to go to school. You skip school and went somewhere else with bad influential friends. That means you're not going to learn the things that you need to learn to make your life better. Yeah. To give you the possibility or the chance to really get a job somewhere else. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And when you do this, you've made a choice. You've made a choice not to go to school and learn and get a good education. Instead, you chose to do something differently. And everything you do in life, every choice you make affects your reality in one way or the other. So if you make a positive choice, it's going to affect your life positively. If you make a negative choice, it's going to affect your life negatively. And this person on the street begging might have made a choice in the past not to go to work. Yeah. And if this person don't go to work, and then I asked my daughter, what would happen? And smart as she is, she said, well, he's not going to get a paycheck at the end of the month. And I said, yes, exactly. He's not going to get paid because he's not going to work. And I said, what else could happen if this person chose not to go to work, not getting a paycheck? What's going to happen? She said, well, he's not going to have any money to buy food or clothing. And I said, yes, exactly. The choices that we make will definitely form our reality. And because he doesn't have a job, he doesn't have money, he has to go on the street and beg, beg for money to buy food and clothing. And if you don't want this to happen in your life, then think about the things that you want, make the right choices and believe in yourself and look all your life will flourish. Yeah. And I'm here as a father to guide you on this path. So listen to me when I'm giving you advice and don't close your ears towards it. Was that the right answer? I don't know. <laughs> did it stick in her brain? Yes, it did, I think. Uh, I'm sure it sticked in her brain. Why? Well, I packed it in a story. And when you pack uh, a message in a story for your kids, it sticks longer. And I didn't tell you that dramatically right now, but when I was talking to her, I told the story in a dramatic form because this dramatical storytelling sticks in the brains of people a lot more. Yeah. And that's what I did. So whenever you're giving your kids advice, try to pack it in a story. If you want to send a message to your kids, pack it in a story and dramatize a little bit. Yeah. It definitely helps. Definitely. Yeah. And story also helps for you to connect with your children. I'm pretty sure that you would sit there and tell your kid's story a lot of times and see how the smile on your face just sticks there and doesn't move. Yeah. It's always good to hear parents telling their children's story. 
I can remember personally when my dad, back in the days in Jamaica, used to tell a story about things that had happened in his past. And it was so interesting and entertaining. We all sat there in a circle and looking at him standing tall and telling the stories. And we just looking up and like, wow, wow, yeah? And these stories stick in my brain until this day. And that's how it's supposed to be. Whenever we want to bring our children in a form or infiltrate information in their brains, we definitely need to pack it in a story. And that's how the media industry does it as well. Whether it's in music or in television or in Hollywood, they use storytelling to really get you stick to their message, what they're trying to put across. So if you want to impact and influence your children, my friends, positively, yeah, it's very good to start learning to pack the messages in a story, yeah. Even the story that are funny about your own self, it's good to do so because that also creates a space for them to be themselves and to laugh about their own mistakes or or, 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 or failures, yeah, just like you have done. Because I have done this. I have told my children things that I have done in the past that was embarrassing, but at the same time, very funny. And I told them and they laugh about it, you know? And then they tell me things that they have done and whatever, and, and we bond together. And this surely helps. This is why it's so important, storytelling, yeah? And I know all the, the Africans out there know what I'm talking about. Of course, you guys, uh, Caucasian and whatever, everybody, every nation, they knows this as well because you always have some parent or some family member who is a very, very good storyteller. And when you have them in your family, you're always going to remember stories that they have been telling. So try to implement this strategy in your parenting as well, my friends, because it definitely helps 100%.